All right, guys, we're gonna jump right into this video, the build of turbulence. Throwing a 1,090 thermal horsepower jet burning Pratt Whitney engine into an aircraft that normally has 300 horsepower. The airplane's 100% carbon fiber, weighs just over 2,000 pounds, the fastest single engine turboprop flying in the world today. And before that engine can get going and get flying, we gotta build a one-of-a-kind landing gear system for the front of it. We're gonna make about 100 one-of-a-kind parts built once, drafted on the computer, CNC machine, colored, bolted together that makes an entire sequencing system for a one-off gear. This video is being created from just a little bit of footage I had before I did YouTube. So you're gonna see like this much of a project that was like this big. There is so many cool parts. Let's put it together. We're making one of a kind molds, carbon fiber as always, machine billet parts, sequencing gear, a motor mount to hold 1,090 thermal horsepower in this beast turbulence. Stick around, let's get to it. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. So there are a lot of things that went into fitting a Pratt & Whitney on the front of this. Right off the bat, anyone can look at it and say, yeah, obviously you need to add several feet to the front of the aircraft. Well, lots of things had to happen to make that work. One, a nose gear on a Lancer Legacy actually sits back here, not way up here. I had to change the entire landing gear system, which I completely redesigned all the doors, the mechanisms, the control, and I moved that forward. It also gave the airplane more stability as it lengthened the wheelbase from the front wheel to the back. One of the things I wanted to do on the front landing gear was isolate the nose gear completely from the pressurized area of the cowling. All right, um, I don't know what time it is, or, or quite frankly, I'm not even sure what day it is. We've been running for a week hard. Um, it's the middle of the night sometime. Um, we just finished getting this glued up. I got a great friend who's helping me out. Uh, he's willing to work late. The glue's finished drying. We're gonna pull these parts off. We're making the mold for a carbon fiber top for our new gear system. We'll put it on this machine and it's gonna run through the night and it's gonna cut the shape we need for our new uh, landing gear. So hopefully it goes good and the machine runs all by itself while we try and get some rest tonight. And we'll turn out on shore, cross our fingers. And so it was building a very separate little box which is done in other aircraft. This isn't completely new, it's just new to a legacy. And kind of how I did some of the fulcrum moments to make it all work together is new. But I, I made a carbon fiber closed plenum that the tire, tire closes up into. So it's been a long night. Um, this part, we got it all, the fine tuning on it done on the computer last night. We cut it all throughout the night and uh, we just finished it and we're excited to get it together. I got one more part to do. I gotta glue this on top of that. The machine didn't have a deep enough bit to cut all of it at once, so we had to do it in two parts. I'm gonna glue this up, put a few final touches to it, and then we'll get it ready to make a mold out of it. All right, that's good enough for who it's for, this guy. All right, so we just finished getting this ready. We'll try and pull a part off it by the end of the day. We've got a long ways to go, but this is to make a carbon fiber cap that will go over the landing gear system that goes all the way through here. So this hump that you see right here actually is where the tire folds up into, and that goes all the way back here. So when this is done, this will go on top of all the new parts we made. Hopefully it goes in all as one piece, so it should work out all right. We'll see. There's a lot of speed lost on a lot of hot rod airplanes from cooling air. Cooling air is a huge, it's almost like a swear word in air racing. <laughs> you want as little cooling air drag as possible. This mold's a couple of inches taller than it needs to be. And uh, you do that so you can trim off the carbon fiber. But the hard line 90s in the bottom are too hard to work with to get the mold to release. So 
putting a micro in it, rounding the edge off. And then when we go to pull it off, it's going to be a little easier to get off. But we're going to put one layer of fiberglass over top of this wood, sand that smooth, do a little body work on it. And then that will be the step that we lay carbon fiber onto. I'll get this rounded out and ready, and we'll be good to go. All right, so uh, we got three layers on. I'm going to do three more. I'll get us six layers of carbon. We really don't need that much, but I want a sacrificial layer, at least one, maybe one and a half layers that I can sand off just to make it extra nice. So we'll keep laying this up, bag it, vacuum it, bake it, and uh, tomorrow morning we'll trim it out and put it on a plane. got a release film down, then we've got this foam. This foam actually sucks the resin out. We're putting on this uh, very stretchy film to bag it and we suck all the air out of it. That will put so much pressure on the carbon fiber, the resin will pull up through into this speeder ply. Hopefully, it pulls it tight, we got a good fire. <laughs> <laughs> like every time they, they get something to come, I have something cut. All right, if you can hear me over this vacuum pump, uh, we had a little teeny leak, we found it. <laughs> we ended up with a ton of tape on here, but we're actually beyond the green, which means we're, uh, we're almost negative 65. So we've got a good tight vacuum on this. Uh, you can see there's starting to be a little bit of uh, wet color coming through the foam. That's a good sign. That means the resin's coming out of the carbon. And uh, we'll let this sit for the night. Tomorrow we'll pull it apart. We'll help we'll trim it up, sand it. It's going on the plane. landing gear, not just moving it forward over a foot, but how the doors work, the mechanisms. I needed them to hold tight. I needed at those speeds for them not to try and draw open or a heavy G turn. So that was a complete redo. It was really a lot of fun and machined every single part billet. It worked out great. We just pulled this out of the oven. This is the lid to our gear nose gear box assembly we just built. We're going to assemble it today and if everything works right, this is going to go on top, so should work right. <laughs> we just got back from uh, the anodizing shop. The guys down there are awesome. We got the last of all the parts we need to assemble the gearbox, so this will be the first time everything's going together with every part. Hopefully it goes right the first time, but uh, I think it will. I'm excited. All these go to that. Hopefully in about three hours we'll have it all put together. Wow, that's a serious part. This one? Yeah, that's the main part that bolts it to the firewall. These are our hydraulic lines that go to the gear well. So when we get it all assembled, it goes in as one giant piece. Lines hooked up, every bar, every bolt done. We'll just slide it in as one part. I hope I can figure out how to put it together. This is a good day. We've got the parts coated, we've got hydraulic lines, uh, our rams, we've got all our wheels, our new carbon fiber lid we just finished up late, late last night and clear coated this morning, all our nuts and bolts. There's literally hundreds of parts we put together and made and built to do this, so um, we're excited. We get to put it together today. It's a good day. It's supposed to be a really tight fit, but not so tight that I gotta beat it in. It just should take a little light fat. So, the anodizing adds a few thousandths, and uh, I'm sure that's where it's at. That's it. You know, we've got hours and hours just bolting this thing together. I can't believe we had to build every one of these parts that you're looking at. <laughs> it takes this long just to assemble it, but it's going perfect, so I'm not complaining. One bag down. <laughs> One of our
of our favorite parts we're about to do. We go through and double check every bolt. And uh, the second we tighten it, we paint it so we know we did it. And if we don't have paint on it, we didn't do it. But we don't do more than one at a time. That's as good as it gets. Done. All right, well, we're at the point where we've done all we need to do outside of the aircraft, so we're gonna install the box like it is in the plane. We'll finish putting the tire and forks on after the fact, and uh, make it a little easier to lift in. The air inside the cowling of turbulence never gets to the front gear, ever. It never pressurizes, and it seals up completely tight. And so I don't have that chance of trying to push the doors open. And then I just made some really simple, good fulcrum moments that use the folding of the nose gear, like a lot of other aircraft do, even the Legacy, that then moves the doors. You know, it's crazy how many things you actually have to make, but I had to make that little part. They make it for uh, a Lance Air, but the shank's not long enough to fit the new assembly we made, so <laughs> build really weird stuff. Like, the whole thing. <laughs> that was a really good day. One of the best days yet. The only day that's going to get better by hooking up this whole new front end and gear system will be the day I start the new engine. It's not that far off. Ron, I'm coming! <laughs> <laughs> I got it, I got it! <laughs> you really had to encourage it. <laughs> oh, this, this front of this door is actually art. And we were able to machine it just enough that we set the light flat. And then we machined the back of the plate so this ring could bend to the shape of this door and it's flush all the way around. So I didn't know if it'd work out perfect, but it actually did. So. <sighs> we'll bleed some hydraulic lines and turn it on. See if it works. Well, I don't have my wire harness on the front of this, so the battery isn't hooked up to the panel, which means nothing's really gonna work right. So I'm gonna jumper from one side of my bus to another, and we can get my gear to work without my harness on. It's probably going to spark, and it's going to make noise when I hook up the other side because we have no hydraulic fluid. We leaked most of it out, so this is going to pump and run and be silly for a minute. That's what I expected. Okay, flip the gear lever. That's what I want. Hold on. Make sure the gear is clear. Okay. It's gonna make lots of little gurgles and go slow and bounce around a little while we get the air out of the system, but should work. <laughs> Cross our fingers, hold on. Before you do, I wanna take one quick inspection. Right. Make sure we didn't do something, like leave something unhooked. Or... It's so robust that when it closes, I mean, you could probably put a carrot, an apple, this, that, I could try and jam it and just cut it in half. It, it's a very robust, very strong system and never gets out of linkage. Once you set it one time, it's there forever. All right. Ready. Throw the switch. That's success. That was officially our very first run, all assembled. I got a couple adjustments to make. You could hear the uh, fluids bounce around a little bit with all the air bubbles. I need to adjust these inner gear doors a tiny bit, maybe two turns out. Front door is spot on. I got about a sixteenth of an inch to move on the bottom. 
Go ahead and bring it down. Okay. Fortunately, it worked out really, really well. Never made one adjustment. It's been a, it's been a great change. As a matter of fact, there's a couple other airplanes now flying with that design. And we'll see. I had a jet company call up and ask if they could license part of the design for a project they were working on. And I said, absolutely not. You can just have it. Take, take it offline, look at the videos. And I sent some files. And it won't be exact, but it was really rewarding to have someone call up and say, I like how you made your gear doors and the sequencing. And who knows? Maybe some jet someday will be flying something a lot like it. That is spot on. That is the best gear I have ever adjusted. And then I'm biased because it's mine. <laughs> no, it really is. It turned out perfect. Wow. I'm a happy boy. How to get all the fulcrums to work, that's it, where I scratch my head. <laughs> um, it's actually math, the thing that I swore when I was in grade school. I told my math teacher I would never need this stuff, and again in junior high and again in high school. And, and to all my teachers, any of you that are out there, <laughs> I was wrong. You were right. I live for math now. Um, but it's all, fulcrums are great. Um, how much pressure you put on one end and what the leverage arm is it results in another. It's, it's just fun math, how to get it to work. And then quite frankly, we have tools today that make building airplanes so much easier. I, the engineers back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, they're... They're superstars because now we put it on SolidWorks and we can do stress analysis. We can make the parts all move together on a computer before we even make the first one. Put it together and it works right the first time. It's kind of like cheating. <laughs>